Hello and welcome back to yet another Revit tutorial. Today we will be looking at structured data output and why you should use it. Um, first of all, short comment, uh, I'm currently traveling so I'm just having my laptop here so audio and video quality might not be that great but would be better in the uh, coming videos again. Okay, uh, let's dive straight into it. Um, as you can see here, I have <laughs> already opened um, an output example because it's easier to look at the output first. And basically what we see here is a possible output that we could get if we ask ChatGPT for book recommendations. And so we basically have a general explanation of why ChatGPT recommended us these books. And then now we have a clear table with title, author and genre. And in the end, just to look one step back, uh, this is uh, works because we asked for Markdown, or at least now we are rendering Markdown. Um, point is, this is nice, but maybe if we thought, think about the real application or real uses, now we have a switch somewhere, and yeah, maybe the user prefers to see it as a clear text, so maybe more like this. And yeah, if we use ChatGPT now, and if we instruct it to do the rendering itself as well, so basically the formatting and everything, this already means we would need to ask again and hope it would get the same book recommendations and so on. So that's not really the way to go. Um, so let's generally uh, apply what uh, is basically also a standard in web design. There should always be a strict separation of your front end, so basically what the user, the user is seeing, and your back end. And the task of the back end is to just, um, uh, just deliver the data. And then the front end makes the view on top of it. And let's do this as well here. And for that purpose, I will show you multiple ways to do this. Uh, we are using to show a look at the special JSON mode by ChatGPT, but we will also um, use some prompting technique that basically works with any LLM, so no matter what you're using. And yeah, let's get started. So let's close the output and let's start at the beginning. So, what do we need? In this case, we need two things. First of all, we need our user prompt. So in this case, in this example, we had, I like the Dune books, give me some book recommendations. Um, and then we have our JSON example. And because that's what we'll be we'll using here in general. JSON is a, yeah, just a structured format um, that is very popular and in use and ChatGPT and all the other LLMs use it, uh, know it very well, so um, it's good to use with them. It's also very easy later in Revit to extract the data out of it. So basically we are giving it our prompt and then an example of how we like the output to be shaped as a JSON. And if you don't really know JSON, uh, it's not that hard. Basically, um, you can see there are different keys in here like reasoning, um, or recommendations and then there are some sub keys here like title of a genre for every single book and so on and There's a pretty simple way to generate it by just asking ChatGPT So what I created here is a small tool called the JSON generator and if you want to Have some idea how your JSON should look um, You can basically just run this so let's quickly show it to you We just press run here and now we enter our prompt and for example here, give me a recipe for spaghetti carbonara. So let's just hit send. And yeah, this went immediately because it's cached. I already did this one. Um, so now uh, let's go here. We can see this is our JSON example we are now getting. So basically we now have a um, example for how to show recipes. So we could copy this and give this as an example in. And as you can see, it's clearly structured. There's a recipe. And then for title, description, ingredients, instructions, prep time, cook time, total time, yield. And of course you can change all this or you can um, just keep it. So you could also copy this now into a ChatGPT chat and ask it to do some changes about it if you need other information or something like that. And then and there's the second part here. Uh, we are also um, outputting some information how to access this information now. Because this, uh, I will be seeing this in uh, in a short bit. If we want to extract the information, we need to we need to know how to get the information. And if you don't know the JSON um, 
uh, the JSON notation, then here's some uh, summary for this JSON, how to get something. For example, if you want the recipe title, you can copy out this here, and this will work. If you need the instructions, just copy out this selector here. But basically, those selectors are super simple. It's always starting with a dollar and a dot, and then you are putting in the first key, so the first level, like the recipe. And then if for every recipe there's a title, you just put dot title. Um, but this is kind of a sheet sheet that I created, so I hope that makes it simpler to use it. Okay, but enough of that detour. Let's go back to our book recommendation example. And here we will now look at the two different um, options I already um, yeah I told you about at the beginning. One is with JSON mode. This is the ChatGPT solution. So maybe let's add this here: ChatGPT only. And the other one is the general one. And basically from the result you're getting, they do not differ a bit. So let's quickly show you the, the JSON mode one. So what we are doing here is uh, we are calling a subgraph and we are just adding this prompt from the user and this JSON example. Let's jump in there. And now we are putting together our system prompt and our user prompt, which is pretty simple. In our system prompt, we basically have like nothing in there. Um, the only thing we are adding is a small explanation how to use this reasoning field, because sometimes um, otherwise it's in in this is not working. You could also remove this probably, um, and then the JSON output example. And in the other one, we are just adding our prompt to a user prompt, so just making the formatting a bit more a bit better, and then adding it to the prompt. And now this chat here is where, yeah, uh, it's a bit different and that's why this JSON mode is working. So what does this basically mean? It's pretty simple. It only means that the only allowed output is this JSON format. So it forces ChatGPT to use JSON format. And this only works with GPT-4 Turbo and this special GPT-35 Turbo 1106 model. So I can quickly show you if we pick any other model like GPT 3.5 Turbo, the standard one, and we run everything. We can see that we are just getting error uh, here, which says that the response format is uh, of the type JSON object is not supported. So you have to keep in mind that you can only use certain models. So let's go back to our model we need and let's run it again. And basically, um, as we can see here, it's now outputting this JSON format. And then we can use this as the graph output. And that's, yeah, that's all that's necessary. So what's so special about the JSON, uh, JSON mode? Actually, not, not too much. The only thing is, I think it, it's probably more a bit more reliable because with a uh, normal prompting, it can happen that the LLM will um, not just return the JSON object. Maybe it is adding something, some information why it did something uh, on top of it. So it's a bit harder to make, to control it. Um, so if you can use it, it's probably safer to use it. And one more thing, uh, in the system instructions, you need somewhere to mention the word JSON. So in this case, we are doing this um, with a headline of the example output here we are giving to ChatGPT. Otherwise, it might not work. Okay, let's look at the non-JSON uh, mode example, which is basically the same. There's only one difference. One line in the instructions here we are creating. We also added only return JSON output. Also note that the only is all in capital letters and this is, um, yeah, not just a human thing. This uh, is also just shown to work for LLMs. So if you put all in capital letters, it will take this more seriously than if you don't do it. So this makes sense in this case because it's a very strict rule. And and yeah, that's all. Now we're using the normal ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo. But as I said, this should work with most of the LLMs. And now we are still just getting a JSON output. So let's go back to the graph. Basically, we now have our two subgraphs here, which do the same, one with JSON mode, one without the other one. 
uh, without it. And now we are going into our subgraph to extract the information because we need to make, um, yeah, we need to split it up and mix uh, to be able to work with it. So what we have as an input now, um, as we can see here, is still this whole JSON object with the reasoning on top. So that's why uh, the LLM has chosen those books. Then the recommendations where for each uh, book, there is three attributes or keys, the title, the author, and the journal. <clears throat> and what the, the, this graph is now doing is pretty simple. We are using this destructure node here. And into this destructure node, we are adding those um, object paths that we have seen before in the JSON generator. So basically what we are doing here in this case is we are extracting two, uh, we are separating our two things, the recommendations, as we can see here, the three book recommendations with title, author, and genre, and the reasoning, which is just a string now, which contains the text. And now we are outputting this. So pretty simple stuff. And we are doing this in both, uh, for both cases. And now basically we can decide how we want to render this. And here we have two subgraphs, which we are also both using in both cases, just to show that there's actually, yeah, no difference how we do it. Um, it will always work. So there's render as a table and there's render as a text. Let's take a look into uh, the easier one, which is render as a text first. So basically we have the two graphs inputs here, which is the reasoning and then our data, which are the books that are to, uh, to be recommended again with the same keys. And now what we are doing here is um, <clears throat> we need to build our final template how it's uh, with the data. And let's first take a look at that. So what we want is basically the reasoning at the top. Then we want our book recommendations and then we want the books down here. So I just call this input data. And for that to work, basically we need to destructure those, um, those entries per book here. And as we can see, we don't have only one. So it's three elements as it's written here. That means we need to use the split node here the split function so that those three objects are being split into uh, yeah, one object each and that we can access them. And then again, we are having the paths in here. So the dot point title to get the title, dot point author to get the author and so on. And for now, each of those three elements, we will extract this information. As we can see here for the first one, we are getting the great Gatsby um, for the title and for the author Fitz Scott, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, I don't know what the first name is. Actually, Scott Fitzgerald, and for the third one, uh, for the first book for the genre classic. But now we all have it separated as title, author, and genre. And what we are doing now is now we have a text node where we are having um, parts of the templates where we first want the title, and this is marked down to make it bold by author and the genre. And now this is also in split, so that this will be fill filled three times once for each uh, book recommendation. And as we can see down here, this is what happens then. Now we get free, uh, yeah, free entries here with the data. And now we are finally adding this to our template to data and we are getting our text template here. And this is what we've previously seen. This is um, our recommendation plus the, yeah, the bullet point view of the books. And then basically the table um, is doing the same. Um, the only difference here is that the markdown for the table looks a bit more complicated. So if we look at our template, we try to fill it's like this. Uh, we have the book recommendations. Then we have yeah this markdown for a header table, then the separator here. And now we need to fill in um, a line for each book in the correct markdown. And yeah, if you don't know how this markdown works, basically uh, just ask ChatGPT about it. Just ask it to create something in markdown. But I mean, this is only an example anyways. Maybe you don't want to uh, show the data in markdown later. Uh, this is just so that we can look at something. And yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Now, 
we are getting those outputs here and no matter if we did it with the JSON mode, like here we have the table um, or without the JSON mode, um, we have well structured data. And um, yeah, we are fully uh, flexible anytime we want to render it differently. It is no problem because it's there. And um, it also forces ChatGPT or any LLM to, <clears throat> uh, to, to use this format to only fill out those fields and so on. So it's also a good way to, to instruct it without needing lots of explanations and um, text to do it. Yeah, so pretty much that's uh, already wrapping it up. Um, I hope you find this helpful. It's not the easiest or fanciest topic, but I think it's a pretty useful thing to do. Um, so as always, please like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.